Welcome to the Living in Southwest Florida channel. I'm Jerry Neesman of the Neesman team at Keller Williams Realty. And today we are here to talk about the pros and cons of living on Sanibel and Captiva Islands. I grouped them together because you have to get to them basically the same way and almost everybody groups them together even though they are very, very different unique island experiences between the two. Uh, so we're gonna talk first a little bit about uh, each of the islands and the differences between them and the similarities between them. And then we're gonna get into the pros and cons. All right, so first we'll talk about Sanibel because Sanibel is the first island you come to when you're, uh, when you're driving over. So there is one way on and one way off the islands. They're connected by a bridge uh, to Fort Myers. And so you go Fort Myers over the Sanibel Causeway, take that through across the Sanibel Island, then if you go right on uh, Periwinkle, which is the main road that runs north and south up Sanibel, up the middle of the island, then at the far north end, you run into another bridge that jumps you over to Captiva. And from there, you can go all the way to the north end of Captiva Island, uh, which is basically dead ends pretty much at the uh, South Seas Resort. So like I said, we'll start with Sanibel. Uh, Sanibel is a city. Uh, which is one of the differences between the two. Uh, Sanibel Island is its own island. It is also an incorporated city, while Captiva is an unincorporated part of Lee County. So it is a barrier island, both of them barrier islands, and sand, primarily sandy beaches on the Gulf of Mexico side of the island and on the uh, the interior side, it's more uh, rocky and coral. Population on Sanibel is about 6,400 people as full-time residents and uh, it is considered part of the Cape Coral Fort Myers metro area. Now Captiva is a much smaller island, like I said, unincorporated, so it is a part of unincorporated Lee County. It is off the north end of Sanibel and just a small bridge to go over to it from Sanibel. And population on Captiva is only about 600 people as a full-time population. Main similarities and differences, uh, as far as differences go, I would say uh, Sanibel has the better shells on the beaches. So if you're big into shelling, Sanibel's the spot. But if you're into cool, quirky dining experiences and a little bit more eclectic environment, then Captiva has the win there. Both islands have great shopping, um, pretty evenly matched in that aspect. Uh, Sanibel does have the edge when it comes to uh, art galleries. And so what a lot of people like to do is hang out on Sanibel during the day. Got more beaches, it's a bigger island, so naturally it has more waterfront and more open public beaches. And uh, then they, a lot of people like to hop over to Captiva for the, uh, the dining and nightlife experience there. If you hang out for sunset, incredible sunsets along Captiva. And the beaches do tend to be a little bit quieter on Captiva because people don't go all the way to Captiva. A lot of them stop and just hit up the beaches on Sanibel because it's not quite as far. Either way, parking is typically gonna be tough, especially during peak season. So there's, I mean, it's, it's an island. There's just not a ton of parking. So you gotta be prepared for that. It may take a little while to find a spot. And uh, Captiva's beaches do have fewer facilities. So public restrooms and things like that, there's not quite as much public accessibility and all of that there on Captiva. The most popular places to hit up on uh, both Sanibel and Captiva, uh, number one, the number one spot, number one rated thing to do on all of Sanibel Island is Bowman's Beach. Super popular among shellers, especially. Very well known for having beautiful and unusual shells, but you do have to put in some work primarily showing up super early because the people that know about it are always there early. Probably the second most popular beach on Sanibel is going to be the uh, Lighthouse Beach down at the very south end. It is the quickest beach to get to uh, when you're coming over from Fort Myers. 
unless you're stopping along the causeway, of course, there's beaches all along the causeway that you can stop and, uh, and enjoy. But once you're on Sanibel Island, if you hang a left, Lighthouse Beach is at the very southern tip of the island. Bowman's Beach is towards the north end of the island, which is quite a bit further up, but not all the way up to the, the tip that's Blind Pass Beach at the very tip, right as you're going over the bridge. So Bowman's Beach, number one most popular. The number three thing to do in all of Sanibel is Periwinkle Way, which is the main road. <laughs> uh, the reason it's so popular is because that is where uh, there's a ton of shops and restaurants all up and down Periwinkle. But you'll see a couple couple spots where it's really commercial, uh, more commercial dense, and uh, you'll have clusters of, of shops and restaurants and things like that along the way. Um, so all kinds of cool places to stop. Definitely, I suggest, you know, make a day out of it and uh, just make stops all along the way while you're driving up to, uh, to Bowman's Beach or to uh, Captiva. So like I said, next most popular beach would be Blind Pass. It's right on the north tip and kind of spans across, although it turns into Turner Beach on the Captiva side of Blind Pass. Great place for sunbathing and also an excellent spot to watch the sunset. If you're looking for a little indoor activity to get out of the sun for a little bit, Bailey Matthews Shell Museum is a cool little spot. It is a smaller museum, but has a lot of really great information, a lot of cool stuff. Um, they actually have an aquatic exhibit, uh, live aquatic exhibit opening here shortly. And so great little spot to stop and check out, get a little air conditioning, hang out uh, and uh, take a break from the sun. Another really cool thing that uh, a lot of locals love to go over and do, a lot of uh, Southwest Florida locals, I mean, we used to, we'd take the kids over all the time. I shouldn't say we used to, we still do when we've got a minute, but uh, love driving through the uh, JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge. This takes up a huge amount, 64, over 6,400 acres of land and uh, mangrove forests that make up a massive part of Sanibel Island. Cool stuff, alligators, all kinds of birds, other wildlife. I mean, there's just tons of really cool stuff that you can take a quick drive through. It's a four mile long drive through the wildlife preserve that you can take. You can drive it, you can hike it, you can bike it. And there is also an open air tram that you can take um, to get a little bit more of a, a guided tour if you want as well. Another really neat place to stop and check out is the Sanibel Historical Museum and Village. They've been working on this since 1984 and uh, they have put together 10 buildings, uh, nine of which were relocated from other parts of Sanibel Island to the current location. And uh, these buildings date from 1896 to 1927. There's a schoolhouse, a few cottages, and a tea room. A tea room and a packing house are the buildings that are made up, uh, that it's made up of. And a lot of great history, cool story to see how the island came to be and living on it has developed. It was massively damaged during Hurricane Ian. However, they have, all of the restoration has been, or at least the vast majority of the restoration has been finished and it is back open and running. So please make sure you stop by and check that out. Great, great uh, little history lesson of the island. And as far as some dining options that we had talked about on Captiva, Key Lime Bistro and the Bubble Room are fantastic. Have eaten it both many, many times. Love them both, they're awesome. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Key Lime Bistro and uh, open seven days a week and you've got inside and outside dining. And then the uh, bubble room is just super cool, just quirky, all kinds of crazy decor and everything. Unfortunately, neither of them at current time of filming are open. They've not been reopened yet from the hurricane. However, they both promise to be as quickly as possible. Elam Bistro did open a new location on Boca Grande. So that one is up and running if you wanna check out the new one. Boca Grande is another island just a little bit further north, uh, although you have to go up and around uh, and then back down to get to it. And we'll talk about that one in a, a future video. 
But yeah, unfortunately, some of the restaurants and dining options are not reopened yet, but they are working on it as hard as they possibly can to get everything open. So those are some of the cool things. Now let's get into the pros and cons of living on Sanibel de Captiva. So some of the pros, the laid back lifestyle would be number one. It is an island life. So nobody's in a rush. Nobody pushing, you know, not a, not a ton of distractions, not a bunch of bright lights or loud noises going on all over the place. It is a relaxing, laid back, chill lifestyle living there on, on the island. Uh, incredible beaches. These beaches on Sanibel and Captiva have been rated in the top 10 beaches in all of Florida for years and years and years. Really hard to find anything better than these, uh, these beautiful sugar sand beaches on Sanibel and Captiva. The location being as far south in Southwest Florida as these islands are, just incredible weather. Uh, that's one of the biggest reasons that they are rated as the number seven spot in places to retire in all of Southwest Florida, or in all of Florida, I should say. So incredible weather. And of course, since we're on the West coast of Florida, you get fantastic sunsets over the water. Every day is like a Picture perfect day when you're uh, sitting out, uh, sitting out on the beach, watching that uh, that sun drop over the horizon. Tons of outdoor activities, lots of parks. Of course, most of it has to do with the water. So incredible fishing, amazing beaches, awesome shelling, just everything, uh, kayaking, canoeing, all of that stuff. There's just so much activity, so much, so many things to do, and. Uh, Plenty of golf courses, not a ton there on the island, um, but you got easy access to them in Fort Myers just hopping over the bridge for the day. So for the cons, of course, being that they are islands with a ton of beach and water access in Southwest Florida, super high demand. So cost of living is very high. Anytime you live on an island, it's gonna be more expensive typically than living on the mainland. That's one of the inherent things of it. Property prices are high insurance is going to be higher. Everything's going to be more expensive. It's just, that's just the nature of, of island life. Also, there are no hospitals on the islands. Uh, you do have to jump over to Fort Myers to get to the hospital. Although health park is very close to the, uh, the bridge. You're only about, uh, 10 minutes once you get over the bridge to get to health park, Hosp health park hospitals. So it is close, but nothing there. And of course, the hurricane risk, as we talked about, a lot of damage done to Sanibel and Captiva from this last hurricane. Although it doesn't happen very often, uh, it does happen. And when it happens, it can be very bad. Uh, so that is something that you got to take into consideration. And you want to make sure you insure yourself properly to, uh, uh, to protect yourself against it as best you can. So that's it for the pros and cons of Sanibel and Captiva. Please, if you've got any questions, concerns, comments, anything, uh, anything related to Sanibel and Captiva, please drop us a message in the comments and uh, we will get you answers. Thanks for watching, everybody.